show of hands, who has used Wikipedia sometime in the last 30 days? Anybody? Anybody? OK. So if you are in the North American or European market, you obviously know about Wikipedia. Unless you have literally been living under a rock, you probably know what Wikipedia is. But if you haven't heard of us, we are, it's a 17-year-old uh, organization. There's about sort of 300 of us in the foundation. We're the stewards for a much bigger um, project that has 45 million articles in nearly 300 languages. Our goal is to help people um, learn and share all of the knowledge that is available in the world. So anyone can edit Wikipedia. So everyone has the ability to add to the sum of all knowledge. So this is the, the core and the spirit of the Wikipedia mission. But this, we like to think of it as a library um, that's written by its readers. So this is a picture of Trinity College Library in Dublin. You might think of Wikipedia, OK, it's a library. But it's very interesting when you go out to India and you ask people, pick a picture that you think best represents Wikipedia. And they choose this one, inevitably, even though they might just heard of the project. So the Wikipedia uh, project and all of the other wiki projects, they're made possible by people. So the foundation is very small. There's only about 300 of us. But there are hundreds of thousands of volunteers who write articles, who edit them, who add images to our project, uh, Wikipedia Commons. These people come from all over the world. This is a picture that was taken at a wiki conference in Berlin. But people came to Berlin from Africa, from India, from North America, from just about every continent. I think Antarctica might have sent a penguin, but I'm not sure. All right. so. This is the Wikipedia mission. It's the, the vision that we have as free knowledge for the world. People can read it at any time. They can edit it at any time. They can become more educated, more democratic, more well-informed, more powerful, more empathetic. It, it sounds like a really, really great mission, if I do say so myself. <laughs> of course, the problem is, when you have a vision that says, we are going for, we're trying to make a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge, it's a little bit of a big mission. So how are we doing, we thought, on the two most important core facets of that mission? Every single human being and the sum of all knowledge. Hmm. Let's try to figure that out. So this image shows uh, contributions just this month to our uh, sister project, um, Commons. You can see that there are some areas of the world that are a little bit dark. Why? If you ask people in emerging markets, You'll notice that the vast majority of people, they've never even heard of Wikipedia. These are people who are online. They have the internet available on their phones. But somehow, they have never heard of this thing that is completely ubiquitous in the markets that we, you know, as a, as a collective group here today, come from. So if we say that we want every single human being in the world to contribute to the sum of all knowledge, we need to figure out why actually a majority of people in the world who have God knows how much of the world's knowledge do not read and do not contribute to Wikipedia. So how do we grow that community outside of Europe and North America? So, we did a little bit of, of digging. This was a, a project called New Readers that got kicked off before I joined Wikipedia. We realized that there are 127,000 
Wikipedia articles in Hindi. Hindi has 300 million native speakers. They have 127,000 articles to read. German, which has 100 million native speakers, has 2.2 million articles available. Now, I love German people. I lived in Germany. It's wonderful. But there are a few more people in India than there are in Germany. So why don't they know, and why don't they contribute to Wikipedia? We also found that we have a, an opportunity in Africa. So if you take a look, 1.5% of all Wikipedia edits come from Africa. That is less than the number of edits that come just from the Netherlands. One small country in Europe versus entire continent of Africa. So obviously there is a huge opportunity for Wikipedia to further its mission and to bring the sum of all knowledge to more of the people of the world by entering these markets. So who doesn't use Wikipedia? We kicked off a project. Um, this was the, the New Readers team. Uh, it was an interdisciplinary uh, team, so product and UX and design research, marketing, communications, a cross-section of really amazing people from across the organization with volunteer help on the ground in India and Africa um, did a combination of uh, in-person field research in those countries and telephone and online surveys. And they came up with a number of personas. So who doesn't use Wikipedia? People like Sandeep, who is a student in India, doesn't use Wikipedia. People like Femi, who is an entrepreneur in Nigeria, they don't use Wikipedia. And people like Shilpa, who is uh, who's a mother in rural India, she doesn't use Wikipedia. All right, beautiful. We have personas. We have done all of the standard user research. We've gone out into the field. We've talked with actual people. We have synthesized our findings into these beautiful and detailed personas. And they should tell us what we should build for these folks, right? All right, great. We built a thing. Uh, it was called Offline Libraries. We worked with a sister project called Kiwix that has these um, lovely uh, files that have uh, downloaded articles from Wikipedia. You can load them into a mobile device. They're available offline. Um, you can see the uh, Wikimed um, pack. That is a beautiful and wonderful project run by one of our board members called Doc James that provides a library of medical knowledge um, to you know, first aid and medical centers um, out in places that are so rural that they don't have internet. And we thought, great, we, we can just make that available on people's phones now. The user research showed us that people needed uh, offline access to articles because they don't necessarily have access uh, to Wi-Fi or to 3G or even 2G all of the time. And we thought, great. So we launched this. And the Android uh, team launched this about a month after I joined the foundation. And we thought, perfect. This is our entry into these markets. Anyone want to guess how many people we ever had using this feature? 40. <laughs> now, I have to say, this was a team of literally the best and brightest from across Wikipedia. They did everything correctly. They did the field research. They synthesized the personas. They tested the uh, feature. People in India and Africa said, oh, yes, I want to download offline articles. These packs, they will be very useful to me. And then we launched the feature to thunderous silence. What went wrong? <clears throat> Nobody used it. It's literally 40 people. So we found when we tested the actual feature, not a sort of you know, thing that's a prototype that is kind of notionally amazing, but actually, hmm, we found that people had certain problems. First, if you have a, a phone that is basically just above the level of a feature phone, 
do you want to download the entirety of English Wikipedia, which is, I think, even without the images, it's about two, three gigs in size? Who here on their phones has two or three gigs to uh, load all of Wikipedia on? Yeah, okay, and you're not even in India and Africa, except you, sir, well done, you got the bigger iPhone. Well done. <laughs> There's always one. There's always one. Oh, by the way, all three of you who don't use iPhones, please download the Android app. I appreciate it. <laughs> all three of you. All right, so we found that people didn't have, they didn't have the actual, they didn't have the storage space for the actual packs that we had. They don't want the entirety of Wikipedia. They want something, they want the articles that interest them, the articles that will be useful to them in their schoolwork, in their community outreach, in their entrepreneurship, in their whatever they do. So let's stop, we thought, let's stop building features that we think are specifically targeted at these emerging markets and let's build something that everybody wants. So we thought, all right, how are we going to make the persona work actionable? The lesson that we took away from the persona work is that while the personas are amazingly useful for marketing people to reach out to people like, you know, Shilpa, who is a, a mother in rural India, and tell her how Wikipedia is going to help her in her life, that's wonderful. It's not so useful for the Android team or indeed for product teams who have completely different needs. So what do you do? We decided to use a framework called Jobs to be Done, which almost everybody, almost every company says that they use and almost no company actually uses. Has anyone been living under a rock and not heard of Jobs to be Done? All right, so all of you have heard of it. You know that it was a framework that was sort of popularized by Clayton Christensen, et cetera, et cetera, Harvard Business Review, yada, yada. Look it up on Wikipedia. There's actually a really good article <laughs> about jobs to be done. So the upshot is that rather than saying, as an X, as a persona, I want whatever, which is what we had been doing, we decided to focus on the situation and the expected outcome, because there is a lot more similarity between a mother in rural India and a mother in you know, urban London than there is difference. So what are the overlaps in the situations where people might want to use Wikipedia, and what are the expected outcomes? What progress are people trying to make in their lives that we as the Android team can help them with? So find, we found the middle ground and basically said, look, these are the situations in which people might want to use Wikipedia. They are students and they want more information about a specific subject. They want links out to, uh, to research on things. Or they, uh, you know, they're just interested in various topics. They, they want to learn more. So what in those situations what type of features, what type of things within the app would be useful to everyone, no matter where they happen to live in the world. So let's go back to Sandeep, who was our primary persona. So Sandeep is a student in India. He wants to find um, basic information on specific topics for the classes um, that he is taking uh, in university. He wants to link out to scholarly articles or things like that that he can cite in the papers that he's writing. Now, this sounds a lot like what students in London or Peoria, Illinois or Brazil or China or whatever might need. So there's no reason that we need to build feature X for India. We need to build feature X for everyone. So we built another thing. This is called um, synced reading list. So this, this, my friends, is available on iOS. So why don't you download <laughs> the 99% of you who use iPhone, download the app. Josh, my uh, fellow iOS product manager, will be very happy that he has just gotten 600 more downloads. 
Synced reading lists allows people to save specific articles that they're interested in to their phone. They can choose to download them only over Wi-Fi if they want. They can choose whether to include the images or not to save on storage space. You can create um, lists. So for example, if you have, you know, you're taking three classes at university or you have three different topic areas that you're interested in, you can essentially make your own packs of content and you get a lot more control over what it is you load on your phone and because they are synced to any device, if you happen to have multiple mobile devices um, or if you download our bookmarklet, you can actually add stuff to your reading list from your web browser, then the content is always with you and you can consume it in the way that we found from our user research that people actually want to consume the content. So this was probably the most requested feature um, in people who wrote in, you know, on a Play Store or our ticketing system, which is called OTRS. And we didn't, you know, we didn't properly consider, okay, so this feature that people in the, the markets that we have in Europe and North America, people are clamoring for this. Wait a minute, this could also be useful for the people in India and Africa who are telling us, I don't have regular internet access on my device. So, we are soon going to uh, build sort of the next thing, which is we know that people who start reading Wikipedia, eventually some of them start editing Wikipedia. So we've brought people in to the Android ecosystem with this thing, with this feature that they need, and now we want to bring them into the community of editors as well. So this is another area where we're thinking about, okay, so what is the, what is the overlap in the markets that we have and the markets that we want to, to go out and get? And we found that in both India and Africa and Europe, North America, people don't know how to get started with editing. So this is an edit action feed it's basically, it suggests small, chunky pieces of editing work that people can do. They can add captions to images. They can translate little blocks of text and things like that. And so this both gives people a way to start editing Wikipedia. And because we're including translations, we are um, enabling people in these emerging markets to make sure that the content is available in the languages that they speak, which currently a lot of our volunteer base doesn't speak. So eventually, we'll get from 127,000 articles available on Hindi to who knows how many, thanks to finding where the overlap, where the intersection between the markets is and going and targeting those opportunities. So, what do I want you to take away from this talk? And what, even if you are not going into India and Africa as a market, what should you take away? Well, first, this is the oldest piece of design advice in the world, and it is true no matter what market you're going into. Design for what people actually want and not what you think they want. So even if you do all of the proper user research in the time-honored and traditional way, and you think that you know what that means in terms of features, you probably don't, actually. So curiosity, I think, is probably the most important thing to take away. It's easy, especially when you're going into markets that you really have no knowledge about, it's easy for the sort of bias to cut both ways. So there's the bias that says, you know, uh, everybody can just have, you know, exactly the same uh, features. Everybody, you know, will want to use the device in exactly the same way. Everyone will have heard of this thing that I have. Everyone will have the same cultural associations as I do. Um, that's just as untrue as 
oh, the people in emerging markets are completely different and we need a completely different app and a completely different ecosystem and a completely different everything for them because they're not like us. And that's, that's not true. They are like us. There is a lot of overlap. And if you can find the overlap and if you can learn from the community you serve, these are uh, some of the volunteers that we met or that the New Readers team met on their research uh, trips to Africa. If you learn from the community you serve and you can, just like we can at Wikipedia, learn very fast from the failure of your very best intentions, you will, in the end, get to a better product and get um, into the markets that you want and get into providing value and actually helping the people that you want, and in our case, um, fulfilling our mission to make more of the world's knowledge available to everyone in the world. And that's it. Thank you.